Hey friends, welcome once again to JD's Guidance. Friends, we left in the last video with the discussion on efficient frontier and we have seen what is an efficient frontier and what actually it looks like. Now friends, in this video, as we have seen in the last video that uh, if we follow the Markowitz model, this requires computation of portfolio risk and returns for n number of combinations of portfolios. That means our calculation becomes very difficult where as we have to calculate so many variances, so many covariances, so many portfolio returns. Now friends, uh, in order to overcome these complications, we have come up with another model as uh, we will see the two models today that is the single index model. Now friends, it's a very easy uh, way of understanding the portfolios risk and return. Now why the single index model? Because we have seen that calculation of portfolio risk and return is very difficult. So how can we eliminate or reduce these complexities? And that's why the single index model has been propounded. Now friends, what this model says that if we have a security, so return of a security X okay, is equal to alpha of security X plus beta of security x times market returns. So what is this? It says that if the security is earning a rupees 100, then part of it is say alpha is fixed. That means this security would give a fixed return. Okay. Say dividend or whatever. Plus since this this return is also influenced by the market movements, okay, market returns, how much the market is providing. So, this market returns could be any representative index. So, let's say the market return is, uh, say, uh, say, 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 50, okay. So, what is the beta of this security? So, as you can see, if it is, uh, suppose we call it as 110, so that means 10 is here and beta will be 2. That means if market is moving by up by 1%, your stock will move by 2%, means double. So that's why if market has fluctuated or gone up by 50, it is providing 100, double. Market provides 50, your stock provides 100. Okay, if market falls by 50, your stock will fall by 100. That means the beta x is actually signifying what would be the sensitivity of the security X with the changes in the market returns. If market return is 50, your beta is twice. That means it will give you twice of 50. If beta is 1, it will be 1 of 50 means just 50. If it is say 0 0.5, that means it will give you 25. Are you getting my point? So beta signifies the sensitivity of the stock sensitivity of x with respect to what with respect to the market returns as market goes on high how much is your individual stock sensitive right friends so here i would like to tell you that if this is the market if it is the return of an individual stock then let's see what is the risk of this individual stock as you know risk is measured by variance of this stock x here I would like to draw your attention that if this is your total return 110 and this 100 is coming from the market. So what is not from the market? Not from the market is 10. So we call it as a residual. We call it as a residual return. That means any return which remains after the market return that is the residual. So this is 100. So 110 minus 100 is a residual. Right? Now that means what is the risk of security x depends on two things what is the risk of the market returns risk associated with the market returns and what is the risk associated with the residual returns so i i anticipate 10 to what extent there is a chance that i will not receive 10 i anticipate 100 to what extent i have the chances that i may not receive this 100 this is discussed by the this, sorry this has been identified by the variance of the security so let's talk about variances of securities in two parts. One is the market related variances and another one is the residual returns related variances. So let's first rewrite the market related variances, right? So market related variances, of course, the variances of the market, okay? 
Now we will of course write here beta of the security x okay of how much the market variance is is one thing but we will of course take into account the beta of that security because beta will be sensitive to the market movements plus we would of course take what is the variation or so what is the variability or variance of the residual returns so we will find out this is this is residual returns i call it as e e of the security x so friends this is the model which tells you how you can calculate the risk of a particular security very easily as you can find out what is the variance of the market okay multiply with the beta of the individual security and what is the variance of the residual returns of the individual security x this is the security specific this is the security specific return this is if this is a uh, if this is security x this much return it will give 10 if security b it will be 20 if security c it may be something different but market returns is uniform for everyone only the beta varies from security to security right so friends this is for one security if you talk about portfolio what will be the case if it is a portfolio then let's see this rx will become rp that is the return of a portfolio now what will be alpha x here it was alpha of one security but in a portfolio there can be more than one security so we will do what we will sum all the alphas right so we will sum all the alphas okay and uh, i is equals to 1 to n so i will write all the alpha i will uh, i mean i will uh, sum them but remember friends we will of course have to take into account that wi into alpha i that means what we are doing we cannot take one alpha because there has to be more than one alpha because we are talking about portfolio so we will sum all the alphas but we have to multiply with their respective weights as you understand from the last lectures that weight means how much money i have invested in with security what percentage 10 percent in security a 20 percent in security b this way plus similarly beta cannot be one because we have more than one security so we have to sum all the betas we have to sum all the betas okay all the betas of the security so i is equals to 1 to n means first security to the last security we will sum all the all the betas and then we multiply with the market returns so this is our portfolio returns as calculated by single index model let's talk about the portfolio variance portfolio variance as you understand has got two parts one is the variability of the market one is the variability of the respective stocks residual return so we will first talk about the variability of the market so that will be you can write beta of the portfolio square into variance of the market okay so this time it will not be x it will be beta of the portfolio what is beta of the portfolio the sum of all the betas in the portfolio sum of betas of all the securities in the portfolio we get portfolio beta plus we have to get the residual returns variance so remember every stock has its own residual returns that's why i'm writing here security specific returns so what i have to do so we have to sum all the residual returns of the variance of all the residual returns of the portfolio stock. So what we are doing, we are summing, what we are summing, the variance of all the residual returns of the security. So the securities range for 1 to n. What is this part? This part shows that I am summing all the variances, variances of all the security specific returns variance of all the securities variance of residual returns so friends this is our portfolio variance it is an easy way to calculate the securities sorry portfolio risk and portfolio returns now we will pick up a small problem and we will see how it fits with the model okay so let's pick up this problem as I have written the portfolio returns formula here or the model here and the portfolio variance model here. Friends you see there are some information that W is given for all the individual stocks 
alpha is given for all the individual stock, beta is given and each security's residual returns variance is also given. How much? Individual specific returns of the stock will vary is also given. If it is given, first job is to find out this and this. So first let's write portfolio return. This is equals to sum of the weights with the alpha. So we will write for 0 0.2 into 2 plus 0 0.1 multiplying this and this, this and this, this way into 3.5 plus 0 0.4 into 1.5 plus 0 0.3 into 0 0.75 0 0.3 into 75, 4 into 0.4 into 1.5, 0 0.1 into 3.5, 0.2 into 2, right? We get this part. With this we have to plus this one. What is this? This is the portfolio beta, that means weight with the beta. So weight is given 0 0.2 into 1.7, this and this, plus 0 0.1 into 0 0.5, plus 0 0.4 into 0 0.7, plus 0 0.3 into 1.3 okay so 0 0.2 into 1.7 0.1 into 0.5 0.4 into 0.7 plus 0.3 into uh, 1.3 so if we simplify we get what is the portfolio returns let's see what's the result so friends i have simplified this i get 1.575 this part and i have some simplified this i get 1.06 this part now friends here it is written I have to multiply with the market returns. Now let's assume that the market average return is equals to 15. 15%. So I will multiply with 15. So friends, what is RM? RM means how much average return is given by from the market. So it is 15. And what is the beta of this portfolio? 1.06. So if market increases by 1, the beta, the individual securities or the portfolio, sorry, portfolio return will increase by more than this. That is 1.06. If you multiply, you will find how much the portfolio is actually generating going to market. And this one is the fixed. Okay. Now, if you simplify, you will get what is the market returns. Now, let uh, sorry, portfolio returns. Now, let's go to portfolio variance. So, first thing we need is the beta of the portfolio. So, friend, this is the beta of the portfolio. As we have calculated from here, this is the beta of the portfolio. So, beta of the portfolio is 1.06. We have to multiply this with the variance of the market. So, let's assume that the variance of the market, this is the average returns from the market and the variance of the market, let's assume 320. So, we will write 320 here. Plus, this is very important. We have to sum all the variances of the residual returns. We have to write Weight of the first security 0 0.2, 0 0.2 square plus, sorry, into, into the variance of this, so 370, plus weight of this 0 0.1 square into 240, plus weight of third one 0 0.4 square into 410, plus 0 0.3 square into 285. Oh, sorry, this has to be beta square. So, beta square. Simplify, you will get the result of portfolio returns. So, is it not very simple that just with the help of one equation and few information, you are able to get what is the portfolio risk and portfolio returns much simpler or much simple as compared to your variance covariance matrix calculation. Once you calculate the portfolio returns and the risk, then you can make the use of the quadratic programming to find out the most efficient portfolio if you have a combination of a large number of portfolios. So friends, this is called single index model because it is taking into account the return of a portfolio is taking into account two things. What are the two things? The first thing is the fixed or you can say residual return plus market return. Now friends, there is another concept called multi-index model. I'll just tell you what it is. Multi-index model tells that it's not just market that influences the return, right? There are other factors also which equally influence the portfolio returns. As we have seen, 
there are two types of risk systematic risk and unsystematic risk so systematic risk has got many components its market it may be interest rate fluctuations it may be inflation so in a multi index model as you are doing with the help of only the beta 1 of market in a multi index model you will take beta 2 suppose it is 1 so it will be beta 2 of inflation plus beta 3 of say example uh, something else say interest rate fluctuations so this way your model will go on expanding right friends so actually multi index model tries to accommodate large number of factors which also contribute to portfolio returns as well as a factor to portfolio risk so friends i hope you got a sense of how the single index model and multi index model is a development in the field of portfolio analysis so thank you friends for being with me and uh, let's hope we will meet again with another video on portfolio risk return and till then please stay take care of yourself bye bye